Hello and welcome to a new Dancing Dialogue. It's a new season and I'm very happy to be today with my dear friend Arno. Normally we are not on Zoom because normally we see each other face to face. We live about half an hour from each other. Arno is about the same time here in the region of San Martin as I am. And we are kind of on a similar journey of life. And so we come today together to look at how we can actually dance with the worlds, the different levels of awareness and consciousness that we're dealing with, with the shadows, and how we can spiral out. So, Arno, welcome and thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for welcoming me, Patrick. Very good to have you here. Yeah, so we are talking a lot about interesting things all the time. So today it's about this dance. Yeah. And how do you see the influence of the physical world, the collective here in Peru and in the world and your own experience? What is it like for you? Well, it's um, the experience of life is uh, is a tough experience from my point of view and uh, you know the people i've seen around um every good moment needs to be fully appreciated you know so that we are ready to face the more difficult moments and life is full of these you know challenges so i have had the chance me to uh, since kid the baby travel all around the world uh, thanks to my parents which gave me, you know, uh, uh, some kind of uh, insight on other cultures, other ways of thinking, other ways of doing. Um, and um, after traveling all around the world, I ended up here in Peru. Why? Because I had uh, I decided to make huge changes in my life. I decided I did not want uh, to feed anymore uh, the accumulation of challenges in this society. I think uh, we should be given a lot more opportunities than challenges. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to focus a little bit on, on your question. Sure. That is a bit broad. Yes. Um, it's not an easy world. Life is full of learning experiences. What do we make of it? What do we make of the world? What do we make of life? The best we can, I guess. We have to become aware also. Um, what is life in this world we are living? What is this, you know, is, is life really about the car, the studies, the debt, the wife, the kids, all this program that's been given to us since such a young age, you know? Uh, personally, I think we're, we're getting away from the true meaning of life. You know, to come back to your question on how, what is life for you, Life is much more than what the system is offering. So my decision in my life was to say, the system is not providing, I will provide for myself something more ethical, something more beautiful. And um, I guess people are seeing it more and more, you know, the, the system is sick. Many, many friends are quitting their jobs, selling their apartments and traveling, and trying to find themselves, trying to find something more in line with balanced life so i could talk for hours right now because yeah, <laughs> obviously so please interrupt me and you know uh, mm. but um, it's beautiful you're sharing it is our personal journey that obviously takes us wherever we are and it happens mm -hmm. at one moment often that we have this realization where we say hold on this is not for me there is a different way of life and yes at the essence it's really all life we are all here to learn and particularly at this time on many levels we're calling this dancing dialogues also the, the dance of the ascension archetype so these new people that are coming in who dare to do something different who dare to step out of these old programs and systems while still dancing with the shadows that are occurring, but yet we have all the courage, you and I and many others today, to step out, as you said. So for me, it was in 2012. I mean, I knew that. 
I had to leave the corporate world like you had to leave as well. And I focused fully on what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Same same period of time for me. It's in 2012. I I left a big bank. I left the Middle East, you know, and uh, the, as you say, the change happens very quickly. Yeah. It, you, you, you may, one may notice that pressure is accumulating before that rupture, that change, but the change itself uh, happens very fast. Yes. And, and it, it's very interesting for us to see how the synchronicity is at, at hand here. You know, you left in 2012, so did I. Many people had this big shift and the Mayan calendar spoke about it. Many traditions actually have prepared us. And we are now in the second half of this shift. And here we are in Peru, both of us, dancing with this world and the shadows. And the other part I feel that's so amazing about you and that fascinates our conversations and dialogues that we have, we actually both have the courage to spiral out of these mm -hmm. old programs that held us for so long. Yeah. You have a particular way to do that. And you even made that your, well, for the lack of a better word, that the work that you do, the mission that you have. Would you like to share a little bit about that? With pleasure. Um, I, will, uh, I will tell you a little story first to tell you where this is coming from. Uh, wh why am I here today doing what I am do doing, which is working with uh, traditional plant medicine from the Amazon forest? with uh, indigenous healers. That's what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm helping veterans mostly, you know, uh, from civilians from all around the world and uh, they, they are coming to heal. So how did I get there? I, um, I quit the investment banking world. And why did I quit? Because simple facts about the world. Um, Working in finance, the trigger for me was learning that the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States is a private bank. So that for me triggered everything because the power to create money is uh, within the hands of private families. I decided to change my life based you know, on the fact that the system is not here to help me thrive and is very much lying to people is deceive people people go into the hamster wheel and work hard and never stop and they think that's it it's the you know it's the horse with the you know blocking his eyesight so that he's going to run straight you know all the way i had a lot of frustration and anger at the time because people would not take the time to understand how the system works which is pretty simple you don't need to do you know high level studies and people give so much of their energy and their time to such system. You know, working hard, paying your debts off to the banks, to the insurance, everything. I was trying to wake people up so that they would understand to what they're giving such energy. And nobody would listen, you know, to the information I would share, even though, you know, these were facts, verifiable facts. So a lot of frustration, a lot of sadness, a lot of anger. And for the first time in my life, and this is where I'm coming back to how did I get here? I fell on my knees, I started crying, and I prayed. For the first time in my life, I prayed with pure intention. And I said, please, God, give me something, a tool, whatever it is, that allows people to see what they need to see to make that consciousness shift. 10 years later in Peru, after drinking ayahuasca and doing a lot of plant retreats and everything, I'm in a ceremony and a glimpse of a thought comes saying, but the, the ayahuasca, the plant medicine, the medicine is what I've asked for 10 years ago. This is what I have been given to share with people, to help them make that consciousness shift. And then again, I started crying like a baby during that ceremony of ayahuasca, because when I realized that I was being given what I asked for so long ago, that's when the healer 
my friend looked at me and said, Arno, God always listens. And even though he takes his time, he never forgets. And so today now I have um, started this year to really focus on the work with plant medicine. And I'm welcoming people here in the jungle for the sole purpose of healing emotions, physical traumas, whatever uh, events may have happened, you know, PTSDs, and also to become more aware of two things, their own self mm -hmm. and the world they are living. So that's, uh, yeah, that's how I have arrived here and that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, and this is also so significant for all of us who are ascension archetypes in a way. It's that there comes a point of frustration. So yeah. like you, I've studied many years shamanism and all kind of different things. I was in education and then I couldn't understand how people don't wake up and don't understand. And similar to you, I, I wasn't on my knees in tears, but I said, hey guys, I want to be an instrument, show me how. And it is very important that we understand that because when we receive, whether from God or source or universe or we, I don't know what you want to call it, it's just a word, that we actually take it, not to get stuck, but to evolve and to spiral out of these old systems and programs and dramas, wounds and pain that have hurt us. So how beautiful you are on this journey and you're very clear who you're working with, what the healing transformation you are providing. And it's not just about having an experience and then they come back for the next. No, for you, this is a profound process that takes people on that journey actually to wake up. Mm -hmm. So while you are working more in this emotional pain and physical healing and all of that, for me and Ceci as well, it's more about opening up these new dimensions so we can look through different eyes of the heart and make that choice to really step out and become who we truly are. So mm -hmm. it is very beautiful that you and I have always been dancing in very similar ways. Everybody has their unique piece. And yet we are both into supporting those who are ready to spiral out of whatever mm -hmm. has held them back in this old time as well that is obviously breaking and gives us an opportunity to choose and live in a higher consciousness. So very beautiful, Arno. This, this is really, as always, beautiful and enlightening to actually speak to you. And you're really, Thank you. you're really living it. So it's yes. not like, you know, everybody can do plant medicine, everybody can talk about consciousness and whatever lifestyle people are choosing. But if you don't embody that, mm -hmm. Let me call it this way. You're a false prophet. Completely. And Completely. I think that is the other beauty that, that you and I share and that I love so much about you. You have the courage to go to your own pain, to your own wounds, to your own shadow, because only then you can share that with others. It's amazing how all of us are so much more similar than we believe. And you know what? I believe it's through the suffering that we are actually all very similar. Because one can enjoy something, you know, uh, uh, can enjoy a good food or can enjoy a good sport. And the taking pleasure, it seems that we can have our differences, but we all suffer the same things. And I see it with the people I receive um, as you said, uh, you know, being able to listen to people and help them become better, heal, uh, requires first you doing that work. And I mean, I've been, you know, focusing on myself for the first seven years doing plant medicine. I've been doing this for 10 years now. 
and uh, it's a never ending. It's never ending. It, there is improvement, obviously. So, you know, that's, that's the good news. But if you are humble enough towards who you really are, you're not going to heal decades or generations of suffering, you know, in, in a couple of retreats. So it's, so it's um, this, this spiraling, spiraling out of, you know, is, is time consuming. Uh, it's a long process, but it's definitely, definitely liberating. For me, I think the main word I would use in all this transition I have lived, you know, from well adapted to the system to completely free is the word liberate. Mm -hmm. The fact of being aware of how the system truly works also allows you to make the right decisions for yourself. Most people being completely blind to how the system works when it's actually not difficult to really know, uh, cannot make the right decisions for themselves because they think that's the only way. So with patience and humility, we can reach the stars. We go a long way when we come into the heart. For me, that's really that. I mean, I, I guess I started working with myself on that journey for, yeah, I want to say almost 30 years. And that spiraling out and that liberation is surely not an easy process. And it, no, it doesn't happen overnight. No, there is no magic wand. The difference that I really feel we are closer to spiraling out because the energies that are coming in, the stars are changing. The big cycle is changing from the Piscean age into the Aquarian age. And there's many different other ways to describe that. We can't run from that. So mm -hmm. we're really coming in a way to that final piece to step out of suffering that has kept us enslaved and trapped and also entangled for many, many years, generations, thousands of years. So I, I feel it's just so exciting that we are stepping out to do our piece, our unique gift. We're giving it to the world so that we can all step out into that liberation. Without the romanticism of, yeah, I have a magic wand. I do ayahuasca once. You come once to a retreat to us and it's all finished and done. No, it's not like that. However, it is not forever. There is a level of personal, if you want to call it personal, there is a uniqueness. Once we are able to really see what it's like to live more enlightened in a higher dimension, in a higher frequency, in a higher consciousness, it becomes easier. Yes. You said it doesn't happen without doing the work. Right, yes. So a blessing. See, the more we can uh, help spiral out, you know, the better. The more we are, the better. Um, and uh, as you say, this is a huge transition phase for humanity. If we're looking at uh, history with a big H, um, like my brothers and I say, we have, uh, we have been given uh, VIP incarnation tickets to the final of the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're front row of this huge transition that's taking place. Yes, I, I feel the same way. I mean, there's some people I heard once that in order to be here right now, there was 400 souls applying for a life. So uh -huh. yes, it's a VIP for this Super Bowl. And it's uh -huh. not an accident that you and I were chosen and everybody who is listening and everybody who is actually here at this moment mm -hmm. to all be VIPs, uh -huh. to see that end of an old era and that spiraling into a whole new era a new consciousness a new dimension so yeah we both find that really really exciting and i know i'm so grateful that we made it i'm sure this is not the last one and actually maybe we do it once in the same space when you come visit or when i'm down in tarapoto 
I feel there is more for us to explore and there is much more to share. It would be a great pleasure. We could talk for hours. Unfortunately, I, I think we would bore your uh, your viewers, you know, if, if the video is too long. <laughs> yes, we try to keep it short and sweet. But again, it's thank you mind. so much. It has been just as amazing as I could imagine and more. So I will see you soon. And we thank obviously everybody who takes the time and the patience to be here and share with us today. So thank you so thank much you. and we'll catch you soon. All right. Thank you very much, Patrick. And thank you to everybody who was listening and good luck to everybody who's listening. Thank you so much.